So it's a mistake to think in football that power in relation to the upper body hasn't got a place. Power's got a place all over. And I think that uh, it's a very important aspect of an athlete who now plays football, because that's what we're talking about. We're talking about athletic people playing any professional sport, but certainly the improvement in football over the last sort of few years is there for us all to see. Look, in my career in professional football, particularly as a manager, I have seen many, many talented players not make it. Why? Because they were not prepared to apply that talent. In other words, they were not prepared to work. Talent has the ability to probably get your runners up position. Applied talent can get your first position. You've got to work at it. When working on power, try to create explosive movements through impact exercises and sharp changes of direction. Monitor the ability level of your participants. Two-footed exercises are quite tricky to carry out, so you need to make sure that you know the ability level of the participants and you're confident that they can perform this safely and correctly. When jumping over, you need to make sure that you actually explain to the participants that they need to have a soft landing so there's not too much impact on the joints. Think about the length of time you're asking the participants to work for because as speed, you are asking for quite a high level of fitness. So within the power, they will be working towards maximum effort. So as they're performing each exercise, maybe think about how long you're going to ask them to work for prior to starting a power session. For example, if you're working with an ability level that's quite high, you could maybe get them to work on this for around about five to seven times through and then allow them to rest. You can still work power with a lower ability group, however, just ask them to run through this a couple of times and then give them a rest. If you're working with the group over a long period of time, it's a good way to monitor their progression and develop through adjusting sets and repetitions of each exercise. You'll see that a majority of the participants are doing two-footed jumps, which is a more technical, more high-demanding way to perform each exercise. Knowing the ability level of your group means that you can either adapt and allow them to do two-footed if they are quite high, or you can split the jump if their ability level isn't too good. Boundary poles can be used in a variety of ways, so they're great when you're delivering longer sessions. Here the participants are shuffling forwards and back through the boundary poles as I coach the heading technique. Getting the body to perform an exercise at a big range of movement is excellent for power work. Putting together jumping, bending and reaching star movements encourages a bigger range of movement but driving through the upper body as well as lower is key. Power training is very physically demanding so it's advisable to work to a maximum effort for a shorter length of time followed by a longer recovery period.
You must make sure your participants keep moving through your active recovery and could do this with a gentle jog back to the starting point. <laughs> 